Ah, hello. Hi. Hello, Keto Carnivore Tribe. How you doing? If you're watching this on the replay, I think we're going to have a lot of good questions and hopefully some good answers. So just sit back and relax and listen to this and hopefully you'll learn something. We already got Karen from Wisconsin and Four Door from Southern California. Turn everything off on Fabry. Get those questions up. I'm going to try to answer a lot of questions tonight. Hey, Rena. Hey, Holly, Sharon, Pam, Ann. You guys are early birds tonight. Katie from Melbourne, Australia. I love it. All right. Yay, there we are. Look at us with our internet. We're all up and running like grown-ups. I know, adulting. Cuba, Missouri. I didn't know there was a Cuba, Missouri. There's, I feel like there's a lot of Cubas. Yeah. We have a Cuba landing. I am feeling much better. Thank you for asking. I'm on the mend, but uh, I still am a little sniffly, a little snotty. Looking amazing as usual. But <clears throat> makeup <laughs> makes me look a lot better than I feel. Hey, Clarksville, neighbor in the house. West Tennessee. All right. Hey, hey. Where are you guys watching from? What city? What state? What country? I love seeing all the different places. Hey, Brandy, how's it going? Uh, Pamela. Alabama, Lake Tahoe. Hey, right. Jersey Shore, what's up? Remind your mama and your mother-in-law, because you love her too, or you should, <laughs> they're going to miss this because they forgot. Send them a text message, send them a DM, and say, hey, they're live right now. Ask your questions. Wow. Somebody from Sweden, Sweden? but I cannot pronounce that name. Uh-uh. No I'm not even going to try that. Winter Garden. All right. You used to live there. Uh-huh. Memphis. All right. I love it. If you guys have keto questions, carnivore questions, ketovore, intermittent fasting, health, nutrition, anything about optimizing your health, let's talk about it tonight. We got Thailand and the Philippines. Look, our cat also is nuts. So Lucky. if you see him bouncing around like parkour in the hey, background. Thanks for sharing this, Valerie. You guys are always welcome to share this on your Facebook feed or anywhere you think it'll help people with their health. And make sure you hit the thumb. It's always very helpful. Yep. Yep. All right, guys. Questions. I want to I have a good question. Oh, you good? Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, Miss Sherry says, I've been carnivore three weeks and I'm still tired a lot. Do you have any ideas? Yeah. First of all, make sure you're eating enough. Don't be portion controlling or any of that. Eat until you're comfortably stuffed. If that requires you to eat once a day, twice a day, or thrice a day, I care not. Okay. I just want you to eat until you're comfortably stuffed. Uh, also, make sure and get your electrolytes and minerals. That is so important. Eating any diet from the standard American diet to pure carnivore, you need to get your minerals every day. And that's why I freaking love this, the, the Keto Chow Daily Minerals. I love this. I use it every day. I think everybody on the planet should use it every day. We got, you got to tell Miriam little, to get some more. Also, a, a lot of people these days are cutting back on their fat. And while that may help you break a stall, sometimes that does decrease our energy. Yep. Um, so if you have decreased your fat, try integrating some more fat back. That doesn't mean you have to go eat a whole stick of butter, although I think that that's fine if you do well with that. Uh, but fat is, is good. Fat is good. Don't be scared of fat. Christy, let me answer Christy's question. She said okay. her blood sugar is high. Mm -hmm. Help. Two things, Christy. First of all, cut your carbohydrate intake as low as you can get it. That should fix your blood sugar. If, however, that does not fix your blood sugar, then you may be someone who is an undiagnosed type 1 diabetic or a misdiagnosed type 1 diabetic who's been misdiagnosed as type 2 diabetic. If you're a type 1 diabetic, no matter if you eat zero carb, you're still going to have high blood sugar. You need some insulin oh, oh, I gotta let Toto in there. from an exogenous source. Our, our uh, Great Pyrenees loves to torment oh, Toto. Toto. Is he dirty? Yes. Oh, he's been in the mud. Toto ah, is our problem love child. It. He loves to go digging in the mud. So, number one, cut your carbs to, to zero if you have to, to get your blood sugar under control. Number two, if that doesn't fix it, go see your doctor and ask for a C-peptide and a fasting insulin you may be a type 1 diabetic and just not know it. Guess what? Tell me. Our next question is from Granny Berry. Hey, Granny Berry. Everybody say hi to Granny Berry. So this is Regina, whose name is on the uh, 
screen up here and she's asking for granny. So granny wants to know what to eat to get potassium or what to take because she had a friend almost pass out due to ah, low potassium. Any dark leafy green vegetable is going to be a good source of potassium. Also avocados are a great source of potassium. Uh, some doctors and nutritionists say that bananas are great sources of potassium, but they're at, they actually don't have as much potassium as dark leafy green vegetables and avocados. So if you need potassium, eat your dark leafy greens and eat your avocado. Hope that helps. Thanks for the love question, you, Granny B. You. We love you. Yes. You too, Regina and Bob. Yes. <laughs> Nancy, um, with lisinopril and HCTZ, you've mentioned that's uh, the time to be careful with salt intake. What's the connection? Thanks for all the great info. So if you're taking lisinopril and HCTZ, um, should you be careful with salt intake? No, you should still eat plenty of salt because salt is good for all human beings. If you're taking lisinopril, HCTZ, uh, called Zesteretic, I would go see your doctor and say, hey, can we stop the HCTZ part? Because it can actually raise your blood sugar in some people and either just take the lisinopril or take just the lisinopril at a little bit higher dose and get the HCTZ out of that medicine if, if you can get your doctor to agree to that. But you still need salt regardless of what medicine you're taking. Uh, yes, we are married. <clears throat> Don't get any ideas, my friend. It's probably the opposite. They, this here is mine. Yes. I and vice versa. Um, hey, Frank, this is a great question. How much shellfish can we eat weekly on keto? As much as you desire. If you live on the coast and you're local to fresh mm -hmm. seafood, mm -hmm. oh man. Or if you it's are lucky so enough to have a restaurant like the Honeysuckle in yeah. Nashville, Tennessee, or the Southern in Nashville, that that overnights fresh oysters, oh my gosh. Oh, mm. yeah. yes. Every day. Every day. This one would eat three dozen a day yes. if we could. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Queen of Cups would like to know, what are your thoughts on stevia? I've heard a lot of controversy in the carnivore groups. Um, they say to avoid it because it's bad. Well, what I don't do know say? if it's bad, but if you're trying to do a carnivore diet, one of the main benefits of carnivore is you get all sweet tastes out of your mouth. I think it's fine <laughs> to still have your unsweetened tea or your black coffee, but stop the stevia for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, just to make sure that you don't have a sweet taste addiction or a cephalic phase insulin elevation from the stevia. Uh, then at the end of the 30 days, if you're like, yeah, I, I just want stevia in my coffee, I think it's fine. What's your favorite sweetener to put in coffee when you do? Um, Allulo seemed to be the only one that didn't give me gas. Farts. And um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Rectal flatulence, as we say in the biz. Yeah. If you can guess what book that's from, I will give you a free copy of Lies My Doctor Told Me. Rectal flatulence. That's what there's we call a mom, it in the biz. There's a mom somewhere who knows what we're talking about. <laughs> um, so I like allulose, and uh, it seems to be one that a lot of people don't have gut issues with. Yep. Miss Lindsay. Lindsay says, I've been on birth control two years. I skipped the sugar pills. So I don't get a period. I started keto two weeks ago and now I have my period. What's going on? Could the pill be inactive? The pill's probably not inactive. It's probably just not strong enough for you currently with your current health and your current diet. Uh, sometimes even on the, the birth control pill after a few years, you can still have some spotting if something changes in your life or in your diet. Uh, but you need to take precautions and, and, and unless you want to be pregnant, you know, keep your legs crossed until you see your doctor and discuss this. Hello, Loki. What are you doing? This cat. Come, come say hi to everybody. He loves saying This hi. is Loki the cat. He would walk on my keyboard and, and knock us offline. Yes. You, we got to be careful of this one. Rick says grilled meat is okay, but what about smoked meat? 100%. Yeah, meat in any form. Now, if you drop your meat out of the car window on the way home from the grocery and it rolls in the ditch and then a possum chews on it and then some flies sit on it, you probably shouldn't eat that meat. But if it's meat that you bought at the grocery, enjoy. <clears throat> Thank you, Sean. Or smoked super, yourself. Super yeah. chat. Thank you very much. Uh, Stead. Yep. High B12, uh, 1,500 regularly, keto or carnivore? Yep. It's very common on a ketovore or carnivore diet. It doesn't happen 100% of the time, but it's very common for your 
vitamin B12 level to be above normal. And I think that's just because when they tested the 100 or 200 people to decide what was normal, they were all eating high carbohydrate, low meat diets. And so they got a falsely low number. Uh, I've actually looked into this because my B12 was high last time I got my labs checked. And there's no research that shows that this is in any way bad, in any way a problem. It's, it's nothing to worry about. But I do think at some point when enough of, uh, when a high enough percentage of humanity is keto, ketovore, carnivore, they're going to have to go back and revamp some of the lab normal ranges because we're going to basically break the curve because we eat so much nutrient dense meat. I was actually talking about this on an Instagram live today. Somebody had that same exact question. Um, we've been doing a lot more Instagram lives. Yes, we have Wi-Fi now. Yeah, we have Wi-Fi, so we're back on Instagram live. So if you don't follow us on Instagram, you should follow us there because we do lives there two or three times a week mm -hmm. as well. And I'm going live on YouTube by myself. Hey now, what's up? Yeah. Gary says, acid reflux weaned off a meprazole per your advice at the road oh, hey, conference yeah. uh been carnivore three weeks and i've lost 10 pounds well nice. done past week uh while sleeping my acid reflux is flaring up times help a little bit yep. um but they have sugar what is, what's your advice yeah and so if you need to take either a swig of apple cider vinegar that used to help me amazingly or take an occasional Tums. Uh, I like Tums better than Rolaids because it's magnesium instead of aluminum. Uh, but I think you'll notice as the days go by and the weeks go by, your heartburn is going to get less and less and less, especially as you lose more and more weight. Uh, your heartburn is just going to go away. I think you'll notice that that happens. Janelle, how long does it take for uh, sertraline to get out of my system? I've been taking 50 milligrams for two years. The half-life of sertraline is, it's probably gone out of your system in three to four days, but you can have substantial withdrawals from any of the, the medications that are for depression for weeks. And so if you feel weird, spooky, spacey, odd, that's part of it. That's part of your brain getting back to normal. Eat a proper human diet and stick with it and the side effects will go away eventually uh effects are in lexapro they're the worst for side effects when you stop taking them uh it's almost like they built that into them so that you would just never stop taking them because when you try to stop taking one of those the side effects are so crazy that you're like just forget it i'll take it gosh but eventually the side effects do go away mt says my cholesterol is 346 hdl 46 triglycerides 120 ldl 276 total particle 3500 with sizes uh 5600 1100 440 small to large to small was 15 my triglycerides went up and hdl down since last test i drank sugar-free pop yeah i'm guessing you're probably keto it sounds like you need to probably wean down and stop the pop number one number two it's probably time to cut the carbohydrates a little bit further. Your triglycerides are within normal limits, but they're not as low as I'd like to see them. Your HDL uh, is, is borderline normal, but it needs to be higher than that. And you're going to do that by eating more fatty meat and less carbohydrates. So cut those carbs some more. Uh, Sedgar again. I haven't gone keto or carnivore yet. I have high B12 due to mm. the MTHFR mutation. Yep, yep. Some people have that as well, uh, and that can that can give that reading. Uh, make sure if you're going to take a B12 supplement to take the methylated B12. I'm sure you know that. I actually recommend a methylated B complex so that you're getting the methylated version of all the B vitamins. But you're going to get plenty of B vitamins from your meat. Don't worry. Uh, Venesia. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. What can I do for gas and constipation on carnivore? Yeah. You want to take that? Huh? <laughs> so I'm may, trying to save my boy. You, as your bacteria in your gut rebalance, you might have a week or two of diarrhea or a week or two of flatulence, as we call it in the biz. Um, but that's going to get better and go away. Now, make sure by constipation, you mean that you're having straining and pain and bleeding when you try to do number two. If you're just not doing as much number two as you used to do, as often as you used to do, that's because your meat is the most nutrient-dense food on the planet. You absorb and utilize all, virtually all of it. 
So there's no waste left over to poop out. Mummy, you says, is ketovore and regular weightlifting enough to boost your immune system to keep you from the vi um, virus that shall not be named? I'm scared of the side effects. Yeah, I understand your fear. Uh, we don't talk about the, that, that on this channel because of previous powers that be head slapping that I got from YouTube. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that you're on the right track. Uh, listen to your heart, listen to your mind, pray about it and keep learning and keep researching. Yours sounds like you're a smart person. Yeah. And ketovore and weightlifting is not going to hurt a thing That's for your immune right. system. They both strengthen, strengthen your immune system. Yes. yes. Renee. Uh, oh, Thank you, Keto Bite. Uh, Renee says, is there any advice you give regarding esophageal dysmobility and esophageal reflux? Yeah, very often esophageal dysmobility is, is just kind of a, a diagnosis that doctors give you uh, because you're having heartburn. I think if you go either ketovore or carnivore within 30 to 60 days, both of these conditions that you've probably been suffering from for many, many months or years will just go away. That's what happened for me. Ryan says, my dad had a heart attack in 2016 and they, he got put on atrovastatin. He is 66. I want him to come off of this, but he'll only listen to a cardiologist. How can I help him? Any advice that you can give? Me? Yeah. If he would, uh, if he watches YouTube videos, there's a, I have a good friend who, who is a interventional cardiologist. His name is Nadir Ali. And he is a wonderful cardiologist down in Texas. And he has great YouTube videos that explain why the statins are, they, they don't really help you nearly as much as your dad's doctor obviously think they do. Uh, Sean says, my mom was put on Lipitor for high cholesterol and triglycerides. Am I correct in thinking that she could better lower these numbers by switching to a low carb or ketogenic diet? Yeah, she could lower her triglycerides back to normal within three weeks with a, a, a keto or a ketovore carnivore diet. Her LDL cholesterol may go up, it may go down, or it may stay the same on keto, ketovore or carnivore. Uh, it's different for different people. But again, watch Dr. Nadir Ali's videos and also Dr. David Diamond. They talk about why you should not worry about your total cholesterol or your LDL cholesterol. Uh, grow with the flow says immediate route out of a ulcerative colitis flare up. Should I fast or not? Yeah, I would totally fast. Yeah, fast and, and drink water with some electrolytes and just fast and let your gut just let it rest. And then you can start. I would restart after the after the flare is gone. I'd restart carnivore. I wouldn't even mess around. Jamie says, I'm down 27 pounds in two months with keto and intermittent fasting. Yes. Thank you for help saving my life. Yes. Now, there Jamie, you, you owe us, Jamie. Your job now is to teach your family and teach your friends how to do this as well. Uh, tired looking for of looking for a name. My eye doctor found that I'm developing a cataract. He is saying that I have about 15 years till I need surgery. Will my current keto carnivore lifestyle extend this time before I need surgery? I predict yes. Uh, cataracts are intimately related to hyperglycemia, hyperinsulinemia, and glycation, right? And so when you eat too many carbs, they break down into sugar, and then those sugars stick to different proteins, they can stick to the proteins in the lens of your eye and lead to cataracts. And so I would predict that you'll uh, have to have cataract surgery sometime between the next 30 years and never would be my guess. So, yeah, you can probably double that recommendation just by eating a proper human diet. Uh, Lindsay says, my TSH has gone up since keto. Any idea? Um, I have no thyroid and I'm on medications. Yeah. How do you feel, Lindsay? That's the most important question. If you if you say, I feel great, my energy is great, I'm sleeping great, then don't worry about it. It's fine. But if you're having low thyroid symptoms, then maybe go see your doc and talk about increasing that med. Miss Susan says, <clears throat> uh, should I be concerned with thyroid test results? I don't have any symptoms. 66-year-old uh, female, 118 pounds, no meds, low carb high fat for four years, reverse T3, 21, free T3, 2.3, 
pre T4 1.4, TSH 1.94, A1C 5.0, C peptide. All that looks good. Yeah, these yeah, these numbers are fine. Um, and you feel good. Yeah. The reverse T3 yeah. is a little high. That's that's probably what freaked your doctor out. If you didn't have any symptoms, <laughs> I'm not sure why they checked a full thyroid panel. She may hey, have asked for it. Yeah, it's fine if you did. But if if you were having a problem with your thyroid, you would be having symptoms. And you're not having symptoms, and your other numbers look spectacular. So keto on. Um, Noodle? Okay. I love your content. Oh, oh, consider getting Bitcoin Lightning address for donations. I've thought about that, for actually. Tips. I've looked into that. Um, I may I may look into that a little more. I didn't know that was an option. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Uh, Lena says, what can I do for positive thyroid health when you don't have one? I already take armor. I'm a type 2 in uh, what's IR? Insulin resistant. Insulin resistant. Yep. Intermittent fasting, keto, and started carnivore a few weeks ago. So. You're you're doing everything. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. Add to this some kind of daily vigorous exercise. You can go for a, a quick run. You can lift some weights. It can be vigorous activity in the bedroom. Just something to get sweaty and out of breath every day. Take your armor and uh, eat very, very low carb and eat lots of fatty meat. And that's you're literally doing everything that it requires for a human being to be healthy. As long as you feel good with the exercise. If the exercise right. triggers right. you to feel worse and you don't feel bad, then you've done too much. Yep. So you got to find that happy yep. medium for you. Yep. And that can be yep. don't anything overdo it. from a, an afternoon walk to doing a few sprints a day. It just depends on each person. Oh, you can retract your message? I didn't know that. I guess so. Huh. Chris, why'd you retract your message, man? Nancy did too. Nancy. Jessica, I'm experiencing some major hormonal imbalances. I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. How do I make sure I'm getting the most out of my visit? Very good question. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so watch my videos about hormones. Write down all the labs that I talk about getting checked. Don't let the doctor forget a full, full thyroid panel, a full adrenal panel, and a full sex hormone panel. Um, and then tell your doctor in detail every symptom that you've noticed. That's important. I find the it time frame. best to make a list yeah. prior to going to your appointment so that you don't forget something in the moment. Because usually the thing you forget is like the number one thing you wanted to talk about. So write it down ahead of time. So that way you're not putting, you know, yeah. the headlights and you forget exactly what you're there for. You forget the most important question. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like you've done that before. Uh-huh. <laughs> Melinda, I tried carnivore five years ago, but started waking up at 3 a.m. and falling asleep at 3 p.m. Hmm? How can I prevent this from happening if I try it again? That's really odd. I, I wonder if there was some other stress or drama going on in your life at that time that just happened to coincide. I have heard of people on a carnivore diet needing less total sleep. And so they would they would start waking up at 4.30 or 5. I'd do that. I woke up at 5.30 this morning. Um, when did she say she did it? Five years five ago. Five years ago. Yeah, time. yeah. There may have been. I would try it again. I doubt you'll have that same negative side effect. Do magic mushrooms break your fast? <laughs> Depends on if you. Yeah. Uh, well, they're yeah, mushrooms. They break so, your fast. Yeah. yeah. Good but, question. You know, do, nice. your, do your thing. Nice. Thank you. Return to positive. Oh, we got it. We, I was able to reclaim my Facebook page. Oh, yeah. So it's oh, okay no. now. We're out of the woods there. We think. So, yeah, as far as we know. Yeah. Thank you, Fred. Uh, fully. fully. Okay. Yeah. For anyone who has been doing carnivore for, say, over a year with no issues, are supplements really necessary? If you're including organ meat, I don't think so. Uh, the only thing you might have to worry about is electrolytes and minerals. If the animals are grazing on pasture that is depleted in minerals, then the, the animals can't actually make minerals. They have to get it from what they eat. And that's why I love the, the Keto Chow Daily Minerals is that way. If I, if I don't need the minerals, I just pee these out. If I need them, I got them because minerals are very, very important. But otherwise, I think you're doing fine if you include Oregon meat. Bubba. Bubba says. My A1C was 12 six weeks ago. Doing ketovorum, my average blood sugar is down to 110. Um, I'm on, what is it? 
Jardians, Jardians and, and Ozempic. Ozempic. Can Ozempic slow down my weight loss if I'm ketovore? Probably a little bit, uh, but maybe not. Uh, just keep doing what you're doing. And what's going to happen is when you go back in three months and get your A1C check, it's going to be drastically lower. And then you're going to say, hey, I want to stop one of these. Which ones can I stop? And then the doc will probably pick the Jardians. And then you can take those Olympic for three more months and then go back and your A1C is going to be even lower. And then you can say, I want to stop that too. And then you'll be off meds. Congratulations. Kara. Um, Kara has a 14-year-old daughter with ADHD and oppositional defiant disorder. I want her to go keto to help with brain function and extreme yeah. behaviors. How do I convince her? Yeesh. Yeah. Um, so there are several support groups on Facebook for moms that have uh, kids just like yours. There's probably someone in the comments mm -hmm. right now. Yep. If you can find someone who has a daughter that is close to the same age as your daughter that is done keto and they can become friends, yep. I think that's probably that's the path idea. that's going to work best. So she can see someone who's like her and her yep. age and they can be friends and talk about it. And maybe this yep. other girl can tell her, look, I know it sounds stupid. I thought it was stupid too, but I feel so much better. And I'm really glad my mom talked yep. me into this, that kind of thing. Yep. For a 14 year old. Because we're talking about a 14 year old girl. teenager girl with ODD. I mean, yeah, she's not probably not going to hear it from you. It's got to come from a peer. And so if you could find somebody like that, that's a great idea. So if, if you think that you can help Kara, hook up in the comment yes, section. Yes, 100%. Because she's in a bind right now. Yeah. Because her daughter would definitely benefit, but it's probably going to not listen to mom. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. Nancy, should I add in Trulicity and Ozempic per doctor to accelerate my weight loss? I'm down 40 pounds since February 21st. Blood sugar's down from 300 plus to the 80s and <laughs> nice. 90s. Nancy, good job. I already take uh, 15 milligrams of Stegolartro and 500 of metformin. <laughs> You're doing so awesome. Why would you not want to take credit for all the weight loss? But I know, I know, I understand. You want to lose it as quickly as you can. I read the read the side effects and read the black box warning. And if you if you still are wanting to do it at that point, yeah, take it for three months or so. But I I would be I would much prefer you not do that and just keep kicking ass on your own. But I understand it's your choice to make. Uh, Chris. Should I be concerned with fluttering under my right rib cage? I've been ketovore for two years and lost 100 pounds. Beautiful. But I started having this issue just recently. It could be just a muscle spasm in, a, in one of your intercostal muscles, but it could also be your heart. So if it's happening pretty regularly, you might consider talking your, to your doctor about it. If you're having shortness of breath with it or pain with it or fatigue with it, then 100%. Talk to your doctor about it and get your heart checked out. But it may not be your heart. But depending on your age and your health, you probably should talk to your doctor. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. We're just going to go with G. Gurinder. Hey, doc. My TSH level is 0 0.57. Is it normal? What can I do to make my thyroid functioning normal? Please help. Yeah, that that's the, a TSH is not actually a marker of your thyroid function. That's a marker of pituitary function. Uh, if you're not having any symptoms of low thyroid, then your your thyroid's probably 100% fine. SJ says, thanks so much for all you do. I've started carnivore, and I want to know if there's anything else I need to be doing for fatty liver other than carnivore. That's going to fix it. With it for somewhere between three weeks and three months, your fatty liver will be gone. I would keep out all sweeteners of any kind uh, and eat lots of fatty meat and go back to your doctor three months later and be re-diagnosed as not having fatty liver. Terry, that's, I like how she, I'm a born again carnivore. One month. One month. Was told by my ortho doc, I will need a knee replacement in 18 to 24 months. Can carnivore help mm. heal and regenerate? Are there any specific foods I should be eating? Yes, I, I think so. Uh, regenerating and healing cartilage and tendons and ligaments is a very slow thing. So don't expect this to happen in days to weeks. It's going to take months and maybe a year or two. 
But yes, I think it's possible. You absolutely need to save every bone from every piece of meat you eat and keep it in a Ziploc bag in the, in the freezer. And once a month, make a huge pot of slow roasted, slow simmered bone broth. That stuff is magic and it contains within it every single thing you need to rebuild cartilage. And now that you're eating carnivore, you've gotten rid of the inflammation out of your joints. So the car cartilage can actually start to regenerate. You might just surprise your doctor. Uh, Bren, is it, res is it responsible for doctors to recommend tests and refer you to specialists and ordering stuff costing you thousands? How do I balance things? It depends, Bren. Yeah. It depends on your symptoms. It depends on your current medical status. It depends on what uh, specialty of doctor you went to. Uh, some people want a doctor to check every test in the book. Other people want them to check just what's the minimum necessary because they don't want to get a big bill from the lab or from the, the imaging center. I understand both philosophies, but at some point, if you're afraid there's something wrong, you just got to trust your doctor and say, dude, don't break the bank here now, but check what we need to check. So I hope that helps. Charles, I'm overweight, 330 pounds, and I have DOE, and the cardiologist wants me on an extreme salt-restricted diet along with diuretics to reduce the fluids. Yeah, Charles, if you will adopt a, a diet that's as close to zero grams of carbohydrates a day as you can possibly tolerate, you're going to start to diurese out the fluid on your own, and you're going to start to just pee out all that extra fluid. Now, you might need to be on a low dose of a diuretic for a while. I don't know how severe your condition is, but uh, you need to eat a proper human diet starting in the morning. Okay. In the morning, bacon and eggs for you. Just so you know, we said we, it's in the description. We've said this every, I don't know how many times. This is not medical advice. Right. Always check with your provider before you stop or start any medication. I am a doctor, but I'm you're not, not your doctor. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Need to reiterate that. Sonja says, I do three 40 to 44 hour fasts a week. Wow. Is that too much? I started keto for two years, uh, about two years ago, and I've lost 80 pounds. I'm concerned I'm doing too much fasting. I mean, maybe you are. Did somebody say something about it? How do you feel? How do you feel? Is your energy great? Do you enjoy the fasting that you do? Uh, I've come to really, really enjoy. I haven't talked to you about this. I've come to really enjoy my daily intermittent fast. Like I'll be out in the, in the woods or in the pasture with my chainsaw and my gator out there working. And it's just like, it'll be 2 PM, 3 PM. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not hungry. I'm going to keep working. That's so awesome. It's so That's liberating. Intermittent fasting. She's extended. Fasting. I know, but I'm just saying <clears throat> a lot of people would say, Oh, you shouldn't fast for 18 hours. It's dangerous. But it's up to you. If you feel great and your your body, your skin looks great, your hair looks great, then I think it's perfectly safe for you to fast that that often and that much. But at some point, it might not be necessary for That's you to fast. Do that you much have a reason awesome. yeah. for why are you doing it? Yeah. Do you yeah. enjoy it? Or do you want? have a goal? Because then, <laughs> right. if it, you know, that's a personal. But thing. I have actually come to enjoy not eating. It's kind of cool to not to not be shackled to a plate and a fork all the time. I enjoy eating. Uh, well, I do too when it comes, but. Josie, I've been carnivore for two months and lost 27 pounds. At recent physical, my A1C was 5.2. Beautiful. My myeloperoxidase is 610 and high. Could this be from carnivore? I wonder why they checked your myeloperoxidase. That's not a very common t test to check. Uh, that's probably not from the diet, but I'm also not convinced that it means anything either. Follow up with your doc and have a conversation about oh, why'd you check this? What does it mean? And what are we going to do next? But I think you probably have nothing to worry about. And Michelle says, any tips for someone who wants to come off birth control pills after 30 years? I'm nervous. My hormones <clears throat> will go crazy. I've been clean keto for mm -hmm. three years. Yeah. They're going to go crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, I mean, you could try weaning off them, but you just probably need to throw them in the garbage and stop. And your mm -hmm. hormones are going to flip flop for a minute. That's yeah, going to happen. Just, you know, mentally prepare yourself and your family. That's, oh, that's brilliant. Tell your, tell your spouse, tell your kids, tell your, your neighbors. 
I may be crazy for a few days. I'm stopping my birth control. So if I say anything, just don't take it to heart. That's yeah, that's good strategy because you're probably going to say a few things that yeah. you will regret. Or maybe you just have been needing to say. Or that have needed to be said for Plot years twist. and you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keto Bite says, am I out of luck for weight loss? I've been uh, well on meds for an autoimmune disease. Mm. I've been on mostly beef water and black coffee for three months. Depending on the medications you're on for your autoimmune issues, you, <clears throat> you might be almost out of luck. But I firmly believe that even if you're not losing weight, you're still reaping tremendous health benefits in hundreds of other ways. So I would take heart. I would continue to be motivated and know you're helping your health long term by eating the way you are. The weight loss may be slow, but it'll come eventually. Kenneth says, "My pH is five point seven five. How do I get <clears throat> how do I get it up to a balanced pH?" Yeah. So, how did you check your pH, That's what, my first Kenneth? Question. Kenneth? Unless you had an arterial blood gas, which is where they stick a needle into your artery here or here, then you have no idea what your your pH is. You can't check an accurate pH from venous blood. Any good doctor knows that. Any doctor in the ER, if they want to know what your pH is, they're going to check an arterial stick. I've done these hundreds and hundreds of times in my years in the emergency department. Uh, if you did it from a spit test or a urine test or a venous blood sample, they're com your, your pH is most assuredly not 5.75. Don't worry. Is there a trend about pH? I mean, we've somebody had, must I mean, have did a pH video. Is there somebody <clears throat> that did a pH video? Well, yes, there is, and they gave a lot of bad information. I'm oh. not going to name any names. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, go ahead. You need to. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm excited. This is this is. So Aaron also has a question about pH. He wants to know what proper urine pH should be mm -hmm. on keto. There is no proper urine pH. Your body uses two mechanisms to keep your the pH of your blood, very narrowly controlled, okay? you When you're breathing out carbon dioxide, that regulates your pH. And when you urinate, your urine can become very basic. If you've, if you've eaten too many alkaline foods, it'll become very alkaline. If you've eaten acidic foods, it'll become very acidic. It does that to balance the pH of your blood. You cannot eat enough alkaline foods to move the pH of your blood two tenths of a point. You could eat 47 pounds of broccoli and your blood pH would be the same thing, okay? Now your urine pH is gonna vary widely depending on what you've eaten. That is a mechanism to control your blood pH, which is the most important thing. It doesn't matter what your urine pH is. Your body uses that, it's like a meter. It can dial it up or down to keep your blood pH right where it needs to be, which is the, that's the important. back okay I don't, know. I don't know what just happened a little glitch in the matrix he's so funny okay we're back <coughs> ashley says will ketobor help with prolactinoma tsh is finally decreasing but now my prolactin is increasing yeah you definitely need to eat a proper human diet which ketobor is one of the options but a prolactinoma you need to follow up with your your primary care and your uh, neurologist, neurosurgeon about that. Uh, Chaz, have you heard of the website Own Your Labs? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So Dave Feldman has this website where you can go explain. Yeah. So you can actually request what labs you want checked and they'll do it. And I haven't actually checked the prices, but I know Dave Feldman. And he's, he's not price gouging. Yeah, he's going to make it as cheap as he can possibly get by making it. So I would highly recommend using Dave Feldman's, uh, what's what's the name of it? I Own forgot. Your Labs. Own Your Labs. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think uh, Dave Feldman is one of the most honest people I've ever met. And, and biased people. He would walk a mile and a half to correct something if he even thought that he had misled you. That's how honest he is. Yeah. Tiffany, is carnivore good for gastritis and autoimmune issues? I've had, I just had a positive AMA. 
been keto for three months. I've lost 40 pounds. Yep. And is fiber needed for gut health? So, yes. Congratulations and no. No. Fiber is not needed for gut health. Yes, right. carnivore is good for gastritis and autoimmune issues. Yep. And way to go. Yeah, way to go. Keep up the great work. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of chats. It's insane. I'm trying to keep up. Misty, I have Nash, and my doc has me on a low salt diet and avoid, uh, and told me to avoid excessive protein. Yeah. My feet swell with too much salt, and I was told saturated fat is bad for my liver. Yeah. You've been given a lot of bad information, Misty. Uh, I've got great YouTube videos about uh, NAFLD, which is very, very similar to Nash, and the diet that you need to eat is exactly the same. So go watch my YouTube videos about fatty liver. Uh, Nash is just one step further down the road from fatty liver. You're actually starting to have inflammation in your liver, the hepatitis part. So yeah, you need to eat a fatty meat, heavy keto, ketovore, carnivore diet and salt to taste. And quickly your fatty liver will be gone. Your uh, Nash will calm down. The inflammation will get better. Your numbers will return to normal and you'll pee off all the, the extra fluid you're holding. Salt's not what's causing that. It's carbohydrates and hyperinsulinemia. Uh, Thank you, Jackie. See, Tarno, I have Graves and I've been strict <clears throat> keto for 11 months and three weeks on carnivore. Will carnivore help with Graves? Yeah, carnivore is, is part of a proper human diet. It's going to help your health in hundreds of ways. But if you have Graves' disease, hyperthyroidism, you need to follow up with your doctor about that. Okay. Jay, I was trying to do three-day fasting after 58 hours. My blood sugar went down to 51. I felt good. Mm -hmm. I ate eggs and chicken to bring my sugar up. Any mm -hmm. advice? I'm on no medications. Nope. This happens to Nisha sometimes. She'll check her blood sugar and it'll be in the 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 mid to it's low 50s. Been in the 50s and 40s. Of yeah, she's had a, what was it, 48 40 one time. Yeah, yeah, and she feels perfectly fine. And so uh, if you're a type 1 diabetic, then obviously would, yeah. never, never do you want that to happen. But if you're not a type 1 diabetic, uh, in the middle of the night, after, after if you've been fasting or if you've been, there's lots of things that could do it. Some people's blood sugars go down into the high 50s, mid 50s, low 50s. It's not a big deal as long as you feel fine. Now, if you feel faint, sweaty, nauseated, confused, that those are symptoms of low blood sugar. But uh, that's one of the labs that I think that'll have to be revamped when enough people start eating a proper human diet is they're going to have to change the normal range for, for blood glucose. It's going to have to be down like 52 to uh, 95, that's going to be the normal range because so many carnivores have blood sugars in the in the high 50s. Uh, Louis. Hey, thanks, Louis. Love you both. You saved my life. I recommend powdered glycine to cetine coffee. Sweeten coffee. Oh, sweeten yeah. coffee. Okay. Yeah, glycine does give a, it's an amino acid, but it gives a little bit of a sweet flavor. Um, okay. So he also tried your advice on how to find a keto doc and hasn't mm. found one yet. I, the doctor, diet doctor is going to be the best resource. They try to update that, I think, monthly. Yep. So just keep checking back and checking <clears throat> back on their list of keto doctors. Yeah. And even if you have to drive an hour or two to get to a low-carb doctor, it's worth it. It's probably yeah. worth it, yeah. I'm getting hungry. You are? Yeah. Uh, Christopher, yeah. will keto help with exposure to Agent Orange and the problems that develop from that? Maybe. Um, <clears throat> that's a very complex subject. I've read very deeply about Agent Orange and all of the things that the federal government finally acquiesced and said it causes. Um, I think a lot of our, our, our respected troops who suffer from Agent Orange syndrome their health would improve immensely on a very low carbohydrate diet full of fatty meat, plus or minus a little veg. I think it would help uh, tremendously with the high hemoglobin A1Cs, the high blood sugars, the high levels of inflammation. Uh, yeah. Um, boss, boss. Hi from Switzerland. Does carnivore diet help against male pattern hair loss? 
do you recommend the drug finasteride? Yeah, the finasteride actually messes with your hormones. It doesn't. Read about actually how finasteride works before you agree to take that. I'm a, I'm a much bigger fan of Rogaine, minoxidil that goes on topically because it's not going to mess with your hormones nearly as much. Uh, finasteride can be a booger. Just read about how it actually works. I have We have heard lots of reports from people eating a carnivore diet that their hair started to regrow and that their gray hair started to turn back to its normal color. But obviously that hadn't helped me or Nisha. Y'all got a lot of gray. Yeah, that we got gray and, and I hadn't had too much hair loss. I don't I know. I got more than you. Yeah, you, you've lost more than me, but it could be carnivore. I don't know. That's something that's really hard to answer. I would love to say, hell yes, carnivore will make your hair grow back, but that's that's pushing it. I haven't lost gray <clears throat> hair. I have gray hair. Yeah. I have way more than you do. Yeah. You said lost more hair. Oh, I thought you meant you lost more because you got a lot of hair. I got a lot of hair. Jay wants to know, what do you do if you have a high creatinine? His was 1.7. Yeah, so you may have some degree of chronic kidney disease. You need to get to a nephrologist and get formally diagnosed with exactly what kidney condition you have. In the meantime and thereafter, you need to be eating a proper human diet full of fatty meat, plus or minus some veg. Um, Luigi says, can I stay on carnivore for the rest of my life? What was his name? Luigi. Yes, Luigi, you can. I have to say it like this. Miss Keto says, my ortho told me I have to have a knee replacement, but he hopes I can wait 10 years. Any way to regenerate myself? Well, if he's giving yeah. you 10 years, that's a lot. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Daily exercise, eat your bone broth regularly, eat lots of fatty meat, include some organ meat in your diet, whether it's chicken liver, cod liver, beef liver, uh, and and keep your bones strong, keep your muscles strong, and feed your body everything it needs to make new cartilage, okay? I've got YouTube videos about foods rich in vitamin D, foods rich in collagen, how to get collagen properly. The, all those things matter. That's what your bones and what your, your cartilage and your ligaments and your tendons are made of. So you need to eat those things daily. Jordan says, I was on two Prolisex and half a bottle of Pepto for 14 years. Thanks to your videos on, you. on carnivore, I've been off of them completely. You have restricted me from seeing my GI doctor. <laughs> oh, Jordan feels restricted. Dude, I'm sorry. Jordan watched that video. Yeah, see, I'm restricted from, from having heartburn anymore myself. Marshall, what's wrong with eating green beans on keto? For some people, green beans are too high in carbohydrate. For other people, the uh, lectins, the, they're a legume right? Just like a pea, just like a soybean. Some people have quite a bit of inflammation in different parts of their body if they consume too many. Now, if you're going to eat beans, you need to cook them to death. It's not going to erase the carbohydrates, but it will knock down the, the levels of lectins and phytates and other uh, phytochemicals that are in there that could lead to inflammation. Uh, if you remember back when your grandmother used to buy that big bag of beans from the store, what would she do? She would soak, soak them, them overnight, right? And then she would cook the dog shit out of them, cook them for like two days. And then you would eat the beans on the third day. That's actually, the, you should never eat a bean unless you've cooked it just like that. And rather than go to all that trouble, I'd just rather grab a ribeye and throw it in the skillet. HOC, uh, is keto good for low adrenals? My DHEA is 37. Yeah, yeah, definitely it's going to help. Uh, but also you might want to temporarily take a good DHEA supplement or a pregnenolone supplement just to get your numbers up as you slowly correct it with your diet. The colored caboose. Have you heard of carnivore helping get rid of fatty lymph nodes? Mm, so if you have swollen lymph nodes, you need to go see your doctor, okay? If what you're saying is you have lipomas under your skin, just at random places, then yes. Uh, we've had feedback from hundreds, if not thousands of people who had uh, lipomas under their skin. Some even with the genetic predisposition to have lots of them on a uh, ketovore or carnivore diet, their lipomas actually shrunk over the months. But if, but if you're talking about lymph nodes, 
then you need to go see your doctor. Yeah, that's not fatty. That's not fatty, yeah. yeah. John says, I've lost 150 pounds over the last year and a half <laughs> of keto. <laughs> your videos have been great help on my journey. What are your thoughts on niacin therapy for depression and anxiety? Mm. It might help. It's fairly natural. We give it a try. Don't forget that one of the main side effects from taking niacin is you get a hot, fl hot flush or a hot flash. Uh, women just know it's a hot flash. Men usually think they're having a heart attack uh, and go to the ER, but that, that's the main side effect of niacin, but uh, I think it's worth a try. Marcus says, what do you feed your dogs? Meat. Meat. Yeah. And we feed the cat fish and meat. He loves mm -hmm. hamburger meat. He's Asleep over here, by the way. He's crashed out. Oh, no. He loves ground beef. Yep. Um, he gets liver. You cook it or give it to him wrong? I cook it. He cooked it. But because he's little. Yeah. Like the older he gets, I might give him yeah. a little We're bit of raw. slowly converting to raw. You can't just give any animal raw meat. You have to transition them or they get really sick to their stomach and have diarrhea. And you don't want that. Don't want that. All right. <clears throat> oh, I saw another. No? Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Jeff, will carnivore help reducing help reduce fatty liver? I thought I heard you say that, but maybe I misheard you. One hundred percent, Jeff. If you want to reverse your fatty liver within three weeks to three months, go ketovore or carnivore. Keto, keto helps too. It's just going to take a, a little bit longer, uh, but any of those diets will reverse your fatty liver. I hope you uh, got recent labs and an ultrasound. Do carnivore for 90 days and then go back and let your doctor repeat that and watch your doctor's face as they look at your normal tests. Will carnivore help Meniere's disease? Yeah, a lot of people notice that their tinnitus, or if you're from the south, your tinnitus, tinnitus gets substantially better. The vertigo gets better. The feeling of fullness gets better. Uh then I've had a few people say, mine didn't really get any better, but lots of people say it's not gone, but it's much, much better. So I think it's worth a shot. Uh, CC says, wife has lost 55 pounds, reverse type 2 diabetes, A1C down from 9 to 5, ALT went down, ALK and phosphorus went up. Um I saw your Weight Watchers versus Keto video, and now I'm concerned. Yeah, so alkaline phosphatase is a very general test, okay? Uh, if her alkaline phosphatase is abnormally high, if it's just high normal, it's still normal. Don't worry about it. But if it's actually in the abnormal high range, go back to your doctor and ask for a fractionated alkaline phosphatase because the alkaline phosphatase actually comes from the, the gut, comes from the female reproductive organs, and it can come from bone. So you don't know where it's coming from, but if you do a fractionated, then it looks at, at all the different parts. But if hers is just high normal or just went up a few points, it's irrelevant. As long as it's within normal limits, don't worry about it. Paula, Miss Paula says, 2018 started keto, lost 65 pounds, re <gasps> reverse type 2, <gasps> struggled in 2020, didn't mm, we all? Yeah. Gained 10 pounds. I now track everything, but the scales have not moved. What macros for a 50-year-old woman? You, are, you did it once. You can do it again. The last 10 pounds are always the worst. They take the longest. And your cortisol is probably still high from 2020. And if you're 50, you may have just went through the change, or maybe you're fixing to go through the change, yep. or maybe you are going yep. through the change. Yep. Um, Dr. Jamie Seaman, who's an OBGYN, she recommends for all of her keto ladies to get plenty of healthy fats and get up and move. And that yep. doesn't mean you have to become a marathon runner. Right. But getting up and moving for some reason is a, a really key factor for women over 50 or who are going through the change. It changes those hormone values is what it does. Well, I was going to get off in the weeds with the science. I was just, anyways, check out Dr. Jamie. She's great. Joseph says, can you do a video on how carnivore mm -hmm. and keto benefits illnesses like MS and similar illnesses? Good idea, Joseph. I'll work on that. Do you have an MS video? Mm -mm. I thought... Oh, you did. I don't think so. Golly, I think, I think we've talked about it on live videos before, but I don't oh, think okay. I have a video. This dog has got, I don't even know what he's got into, but half his high, <laughs> back end is muddy and his front end is clean. And I don't really know how that happened. And he's on Nisha's pillow, Thanks. snuggling in. <laughs> Toto, man. Melissa wants to know what causes protein in urine? I'm 26 weeks pregnant. 
Yeah, so <laughs> multiple things could cause that, but uh, you need to follow up with your doctor if you had yeah. protein in your urine. It Hopefully can be they a, scheduled a follow-up with you if you did. Yeah, surely they did. Uh, but it, it could be infection in the kidney. It could be some kidney problem. Uh, you, you can have ketones in your urine and it not be a big deal, but usually if there's protein in your urine, that's at least some degree of a deal. So follow up with your doctor about that. <clears throat> Toto is a little stinker, Holly. Y'all know a stinker. the ones of you who follow us for years know he's the problem child. Yep, he is, he problem is. Child. but we love him. Does bone broth break a fast? Stephen wants to Yeah, know. I think so, Stephen, because it has protein and amino acids, and they're going to raise your, your insulin level a normal amount, a healthy amount, but it is going to elevate your insulin. So I think it breaks a fast. Yeah. I think it's very healthy and very good for you, and you should drink some every day, but not during your fasting window. Where does that go? Andy's girl. Andy's girl waves to Dr. Barry. My labs are all coming down and back to better than ever across the board. Down 46 pounds in three months on carnivore. That's Andy's girl right there for you. I love it. I wish that I had Andy's girl. <laughs> I was going to do that. I, I knew thought. you were. I was, I that's why I waited. Being I thought, inappropriate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. guess it would be. No, I'm, I really don't, Andy. You, you, yeah, you can she's yours. Uh, Zan wants to know, does vigorous exercise spike blood sugars? Yeah, it can. And, and that's good. It's also, good. fasting for over 18 hours can make your blood sugar go up a little bit. That's not bad. It's not dangerous. That's not pathology. That's how the human body works. We've just forgotten all that stuff. HOC wants to know, is marathon training okay with low adrenals? Um, yeah, just take your DHEA supplement, eat your fatty meat, and go run. If you want to. If you want to. I don't know why don't you wanna. would want to. But... Cloud 420. <laughs> is eating raw meat safe? If the meat is fresh, if it smells good, if you are certain of the origin of the meat, I think it's 100% safe. Uh, at least once a week, Nisha or I, or I one, eat some raw meat. It's not a big deal as it's been made out to be. Now, if the meat was killed in Australia, processed in China, and came over on a cargo ship set for six weeks in the in the San Diego port, and then was rode on a container truck all the way to your far, you know, your grocery, then you probably shouldn't eat that meat raw. Also, if it's been ground and ground up and, and smushed together, you probably shouldn't eat that meat. Raw. Yeah, we don't eat ground beef raw. Yeah. I'm sure there's someone out there doing it. If it's it a fresh steak, we haven't made we, tartare in a while. No, we need to. Yes. We've been saying we were going to make that video for three years. Yeah. No joke. Listen, though, what you just said, Lynn, we've had Wagyu like twice, okay? And one time it was raw, and that definitely didn't come from around here, and it was fine. But it wasn't processed and smushed up and came from 40 different cows. Yeah, well, you went on a long trip. one cow. This is my point, is to know the source, know where your meat came from. And I, I, in that case, it's 100% safe. We have had raw. steak tartare with a steak from Walmart. We have had steak tartare from a, a steak from Kroger. Yep. We've had it from a local's. I think so way back on my Instagram, I actually did a little video on my of me yesterday. making steak tartare yeah. years ago. Anyways, we really enjoy it. steak tartare. Ooh, really love it. That's great. Uh, should you eat, Island Man, should you eat steak gristle or just steak fat? Both. 100% both. you can stomach it. The so gristle good. in the steak, that's one of the things that you guys out there with knee arthritis you need to be learning to like the gristle in your steak, the little tendons when you're eating chicken legs, the skin on your tuna, the uh, sardines with the bones in them. That's the kind of stuff your body needs to rebuild your joints. So you got to learn to like it. All Put right. some mustard on it. Last question. Wait, is it? No, that's old. Okay. Why does this? What? What it, happened? It doesn't scroll. Oh, I, I know. Uh, StreamYard, if you're watching, could you make the comments just auto scroll? I understand why you're doing that, but stop that. What? Oh, you were talking to someone who's not listening. Okay. Well, they may be listening. They're not listening. Know. Nobody cares. There's 2,700 people. Okay. Maybe somebody works at StreamYard. Hey, you guys, before you leave, please make sure you hit that thumb. On the way out, hit the thumb. Go subscribe to my channel. Yep. Follow us both on Instagram. Yep. All the links are in the bio. Yep. Uh, or description, Facebook, 
here, Instagram, no, YouTube here. Yep. That's We're right. not on Instagram. And <laughs> come over to Twitter and help me fight for the proper human diet. Because people are trying to give me crap about it every day on Twitter and I'm fighting and I need some reinforcement. Listen, if you want to survive life and protect your mental health, please don't go on Twitter. <laughs> don't do it. If you're feeling snarky, go to Twitter. No. Aaron said, spank the thumb button. I'm going to start saying that. Spank, spank that, that thumb, thumb button. button and spank the subscribe button. In a good way. Hit spank the bell notification. That's hilarious, <laughs> right? Thank you, Aaron. I love it. I love it. Thank that. you, guys. Thanks so much to our Facebook uh, supporters and to our patrons on patreon.com. I'll be doing a live in, on Patreon uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday at 6 p.m. for vital patrons and above. If you've got a more detailed question you want to ask me, patreon.com is the place to do it. That's where the tribe is. That's where the tribe is. <coughs> I made it. You I made didn't it. cough a whole lot. So and no good. snot bubbles. See, a lot of people are like, yes, toxic. Twitter toxic. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Twitter's rough. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Set a reminder and remind your mama.